In today's video, we're going to be looking at topic one of biology, and that topic is cell biology. As you can see on the page, here is the list of subtopics we're going to be looking at. As always, I recommend pausing the video where you need to, making notes, and if there's anything you don't understand that you want me to re-go over, put it down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. If you find the video useful, please like and subscribe so I can continue making these. But apart from that, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy. Starting off, we have the animal and the plant cells. These are called eukaryotic cells and you must 100% know everything about them. So an animal cell and a plant cell have lots of similarities. As you can see in the middle, a cell membrane, mitochondria, ribosomes, cytoplasm and nucleus. The plant cell also contains a permanent vacuole, chloroplasts and a cell wall. We will see what each of these do in the next slide. In terms of exam questions, they may often ask you the similarities and differences between these two cells, so always be prepared for those type of questions. What does each subcellular structure do? So I won't read them all, but I'll let you pause the video, take some notes, and make sure you understand all of these as well, as they can also play into exam questions and stuff like that. There are certain words here that you may not be 100% familiar with, such as protein synthesis, Protein synthesis just means making proteins, and everything else I've tried to simplify down as much as possible for you. Here we have bacterial cells. So on the other page, we had eukaryotic cells, which was animal and plant cells. Bacteria cells are also known as prokaryotic cells. Now prokaryotic cells, as you can see from the list on the right, they do not contain nuclei. They are much smaller than eukaryotic cells, or eukaryotic cells are bigger. Prokaryotic cells do not contain mitochondria or ribosomes. There is also a few other things they don't contain, such as chloroplasts and vacuole. And prokaryotes are single-celled organisms. Again, I highly recommend making a note of the diagram and the labels on that. You will notice in place of the nuclei, we have a single DNA loop in the middle and these free-flowing plasmids, which contain the genetic information like a nucleus would, but they're just floating around in the cytoplasm instead of being in an enclosed space. You also need to know about the two different types of microscopes and the differences and similarities between those. So you have a light microscope, which is most likely the one that you would have seen in schools, um, and the electron microscope is used at a much more industrial level from proper scientists. So electron microscope has a better magnification and a better resolution. That means that it can zoom in further and it can also produce clearer images, basically. The light microscope is much cheaper, easier to use and easier to set up, which is why we use them in schools. And the electron requires dead specimen. The way the light microscope works is it uses light, believe it or not, to allow you to see the cells or the tissues that you're trying to look at. Whereas an electron microscope fires electrons at the dead specimen to then produce a picture of what it is that you're trying to see. There is also an equation linking magnification, image size and actual size. These words may vary a little bit, you may have real size instead of actual size. The reason I like to use actual size is because as you can see in the triangle it produces I am. By creating a little phrase like I am out of the equation I've just found it stuck a lot easier and I haven't really worried about trying to remember it. Cell specialization and stem cells. So cell specialization is the process by which cells differentiate to become specialized for a certain function. Examples of specialized cell, which you almost definitely would have heard of before, things like nerve cells, fat cells, muscle cells, brain cells, and the other four on there that you can see. I've also drawn some diagrams of what stem cells can become. So just examples of specialized cells, basically. So you've got a root hair cell, a nerve cell, red blood cell, and a sperm cell. And there are multiple types of different stem cells. So you can have embryonic stem cells, which are totipotent. Now the word totipotent just means it can become any type of cell. Adult stem cells are multipotent, which means they have potential to become most type of cells. And stem cells are often used to cure diseases. So for example, someone that is paralysed and their nerve cells aren't working, you can use stem cells to make them more nerve cells. Mitosis and the cell cycle. So you can see on the right hand side, if you're doing triple, it's good to have a rough idea of the phrases such as interphase, mitosis and cytokinesis. But for those of you just doing combined science, we just need to know about the process of mitosis. So first of all, the DNA duplicates and grows. The chromosomes line up in the centre and these little fibres pull them apart to each side of the cell. 
Once they're at each side of the cell, the nuclei reforms and the cell membrane will split, which creates two daughter cells. Daughter cells just mean they are identical to the parent. Cell transport. There is three different types of cell transport, as you can see. The first two are passive processes, meaning they just happen naturally with no energy required. We have diffusion and osmosis. The definitions are very, very similar, but I would highly recommend pausing the video and writing those down and remembering them because exam questions love the definitions of these. You'll see the main difference between them is osmosis is just with water particles through a partially permeable membrane, whereas diffusion normally just happens within like a container or like a room, and it can also be with gases as well. Active transport, on the other hand, is the net movement of particles from a low concentration to a high concentration. Now, this is against the concentration gradient and does require energy, which makes it an active process. You can see I've drawn an example with the little flower there. So in the roots, root hair cells will try and collect nutrients and water from the soil so that the plant can use it. However, once the plant root has absorbed a certain amount of water and nutrients, there becomes a lower concentration in the soil, but the plant doesn't want to waste any of that nutrients. So active transport occurs and the plant root uses energy to bring in those last few nutrients and water particles. There are many uses of osmosis and diffusion within the body. For example, gas exchange in the lungs is an example of diffusion. And in the large intestine, when water is absorbed from the food into the blood, that would be an example of osmosis in the body. And finally, the factors affecting cell transport are these six things here. So surface area, temperature, having a short diffusion pathway, which means the gases don't have to diffuse across a load of cells. A good blood supply, for example, in the alveoli, when the oxygen is trying to diffuse into the blood, having lots and lots of capillaries around that area means that there is always somewhere for that oxygen to go. A constant concentration gradient. Again, what I mean by that, for example, in a leaf, when the leaf is absorbing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen, it always helps to have something like wind to pull those oxygen particles away, which maintains that constant concentration gradient, and also the steepness of the concentration gradient. So if you've got a really, really, really high concentration of something in a certain area, going to a, an area that has almost nothing, that is going to happen a lot quicker than if the concentrations are fairly similar in the first place. And that is the end of the cell biology topic. The next topic will be organisation. So keep an eye out for that video when it comes out. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that helped.